Please join me for the call to worship. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. To us is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace.
Grace to you and peace, the name of God, our Creator, and Christ, our Redeemer. My name is Stephen Cady. I am the senior minister here at Asbury First. And on behalf of my colleagues and the entire congregation, we are so glad that you are joining us this evening. We are glad whether you are here with us live physically in the nave, whether you're listening on the radio or through your phone, or whether you're watching on the live stream now or sometime in the future. What a gift it is to be together. I would remind you that we are open every Sunday, not just this Sunday, and we hope that you'll join us again. We would love to know that you're here, so if you're physically with us and are willing to sign that red Ritual of Friendship tablet, which you'll find towards the center of your aisle at some point during the service and pass it down, we would love to celebrate your presence with us. If you're watching on the live stream, just take a moment to check in on our website or send a text to 844-239-5340, and we would celebrate your presence among us. That being said, we turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God. You are welcome to be seated as we have our Advent candle lit for this evening. Hope is assertive, peace is subversive, Joy is provocative, and love is transformative. Hope became alive in us with the cry of the newborn baby. The heavenly host declared peace on earth, goodwill to all. Joy was shared by shepherds who witnessed the miraculous sights. And love is what the Christ child teaches us, the kind of love that still transforms the world when we share it. On this night, we remember that hope, peace, joy, and love are not merely words for this season of the year, but the eternal promises of God to us, God's people. God, make your presence known to us, now and always. Shine bright in the shadows and despair, and may the warmth of your love carry us forward. Jesus' birth changed the world forever, and you are changing our lives right now. On this Christmas Eve, we pray that hope, peace, joy, and love be restored. Inspire us to participate in, in this work now by doing justice, practicing love and kindness, and walking humbly with you, our Savior and Redeemer, each day of our lives. Amen. Friends, this is one of my favorite services of the year, not just because it's the one time you can hear a really good sermon that is from the children today, but because they have been putting so much time and effort and energy into bringing you this story today, and it is with such joy that I am welcoming you to get to hear this story from them. I want to say a special thank you to all the children who are involved, to the parents who brought your kids week after week to make this happen, and especially to Miss Holly and Miss Paula for their work, and to David Strong for playing the piano for this. And without further ado, the children shall lead us tonight for the annual Christmas pageant. Long before the birth of Jesus, Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet, foretold the coming of the Messiah. Jesse's family is like a tree that has been cut down. 
a new little tree will grow from its stump. From its roots, a branch will grow and produce fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on that branch. He will help to be wise and understanding. He will help him know the Lord and have respect for him. The branch will take delight in respecting the Lord. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. He was sent to a virgin. The girl was engaged to a man named Joseph. He came from the family line of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel greeted her and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king like his father David long ago. His kingdom will never end. How can this happen? The Holy Spirit will come to you. The power of the Most High God will cover you. So the Holy One that is born will be called the Son of God. Nothing is impossible with God. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God my Savior. He has taken note of me. Even though I'm not important, from now on, all people will call me blessed. A decree is sent out from Caesar Augustus that the census be taken of all the people of earth. This law requires that the list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. All people must go to their towns to be listed. So Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. That is where Bethlehem, the town of David was. Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby! We are weary travelers looking for a place to spend the night. Do you have room? I'm sorry, I don't. Maybe there's room in the stables. Let's go see. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for their child to be born. Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in strips of cloth. She laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Jesus, let
There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were looking after their sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. (laughs) But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. Born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Let this be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Joy, great, well, glory to God on earth, peace and goodwill toward all. And suddenly there appeared with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So the shepherds hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the statement which had been told to them about this child. 
and all who heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they have heard and seen. the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? We observed his star at its rising. We have come to pay him homage. So they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy on entering the house. They saw the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down to pay him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
Will you please join me in thanking our children for the wonderful production that they gave? What a gift. Please be seated. I will say, if there are parents out there of younger children or children really of any age, we have, all right, friends, you can go find a seat back here. Yes, come on down. Parents of any age, on Wednesday evenings throughout the school year, we have dinners from 5.30 to 6. We have the younger kids have choir from 5 to 6, and the older kids have choir from 6 to 7. Please come and let them join. It is such a nice way to be exposed to music in a safe environment where all kids can participate. And this is a place where all kids are able to participate. And in that spirit, I want to invite any children who might like to come forward for a special time with the children at this time. Come on down, friends. Great, I'm just have you have a seat right around here. Come on down. That was so great, wasn't it? What a gift to have Miss Holly, Miss Paula, Mr. Strong, all of the volunteers who helped make that possible. What a gift it was. So who's excited for tomorrow? Yes? Okay, when I think about Christmas, if I'm honest, sometimes I think about the gifts that we get to unwrap and the toys that just might be in them. So who's excited for any toys tomorrow? Yes? Okay, me too. I think that's exciting. And as you get older, the toys get more complex and more expensive, and sometimes they take up all of our time as we're trying to focus so much on that, those toys. But I was thinking, you know, Christmas is such a special time that we don't want to just think about the toys. And I thought maybe this year we could have the toys help remind us about Christmas, as opposed to Christmas reminding us about the toys. You think we could do that? So here's what I thought. I thought I'd bring out my favorite toy. Does anybody know what this is? A yo-yo. Yeah. Yes, OK. So this is my favorite toy ever. And I love playing with the yo-yo. And I was thinking, maybe we could use the yo-yo as a way to tell the Christmas story. And there's lots of different ways to do this. We could do it where we talk about the star that's shining over us, right? Or we could talk about the baby that's in the manger and waiting for that baby. But you know what? All these kids up here just did that so well. We don't have to tell that story again. You already know that story. So maybe there's another way to do this. Maybe the yo-yo can help us tell what that story actually means. You see, maybe it's telling us a little something about life. And we know that life has its ups and downs, doesn't it? And there are moments when things are going really well and we feel like we can do anything we want and find our way into life that we can go on bike rides, <laughs> or we can go in a swing set, and find our way around. We can go taking our dog for a walk, <laughs> and things just seem to be working. But there are these other moments in life, and maybe you haven't experienced them yet, when you really want to do something. and you find yourself a little stuck. And no matter what you do, you can't seem to get back to where you want to be. And you can push and pull and move all over the place, and it's really hard to find your way. But here's the promise of Christmas. The promise of Christmas is that God is with us, which means that no matter how far we get, off the beaten path, 
no matter what's happened in our life or how lost we feel like we are, we always have a tie back to someone who loves us. And while it might take a little finagling to get there, eventually we can get going again. We can find our way, and while we might have other times where we get a little stuck, once we know that lesson, it doesn't matter if we find ourselves in Paris, or on a rocket ship, or riding our bike, or anywhere we go around the world. God is with us, pulling us back, and reminding us that we are loved. We give thanks to God for that tonight on this Christmas Eve, for the tie that binds us all together and connects us back to the one who loves us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that no matter if we are in the highest high or the lowest low, you are there with us. No matter what mistakes we've made or what mistakes we will make, there is nothing we can do or say to lose your love, which means that we are never alone in this world. And that while each of us might face hard times, we get to face them together. We give thanks to you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for coming up, friends. You can go back to be seated with your family. I love you too, Sean. blessing it is to be together in body or in spirit to worship God on this Christmas Eve. We are so glad that you're here with us at Asbury First United Methodist Church, where our mission is to love God and neighbor, live fully, serve all, and repeat. We are so grateful for the way that our live stream service can connect us to people all around the country. This afternoon, we say hello to those who are joining us online from, we have, okay, first of all, we have 270 viewers, um, and they're joining us online from New York, South Carolina, North Carolina, Maine, Florida, Ohio, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Indiana, Illinois, Massachusetts, Colorado, Vermont, Ontario, New Hampshire, Georgia, California, Wisconsin, Washington, Rhode Island, Oklahoma, Maryland, and Arizona. And it looks like there's 18 additional states and 37% are mobile users. So that's great information for us <laughs> to have. We are so glad that you're with us today. Um, please take a moment to check in, whether you're viewing online through our website or text, or if you're here in the nave, if you haven't yet signed our Ritual of Friendship attendance pad on the end of your pews, send them along to your pew neighbors. 
Friends, the Christmas story reminds us that God cares so deeply about the world that God was willing not only to come here, but to stay here. We are reminded that Christ comes to bring good news to the homeless and the poor, the marginalized and the oppressed, victims of violence and of occupation. Recognizing this aspect of Christmas, 100% of the offerings that we collect today, both in our services and through our online giving, will be directed to the outreach ministries at Asbury First, our efforts to alleviate and end the suffering of our neighbors. If you turn over your bulletin on the back cover, you should find some more information about our outreach work, including our community outreach center, which opened this year and is located right next door, as well as our off-campus efforts from School 17 to the Lyle Otis neighborhood to Nicaragua to India. As Christians in the Methodist tradition, we believe that the birth of Christ testifies to God's radical commitment to transforming the world for the sake of those who suffer. At this time, we invite you to join in this transformational work by making a gift to our outreach ministries in the offering plates, or by scanning the QR code in the bulletin, or simply by committing to learn more about our ministries, maybe even visiting our community outreach center in the new year. May our Christmas worship be paired with action that brings us closer to the fulfillment of God's promises of peace on earth and goodwill to all. At this time, I invite our ushers forward to collect our offerings.
as the light of Christ comes. We remember these words from the ancient hymn. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So Christ imparts to human hearts the wonders of God's heaven. No ears may hear its coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in.
when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to feed the hungry, to heal the broken, to release the prisoners, to rebuild the nation, to bring peace among neighbors, to make music in the heart. Friends, Merry Christmas.